my lovely, lovely imps, welcome to Cooking Mama, the part of the show where I watch cooking videos and talk about them. I love food, I think cooking is amazing, and I've been doing this kind of stuff on my show for a really long time. If you want to check out other episodes, which are awesome, you should search my channel, Demon Mama, Cooking Mama. It's that simple. Cooking Mama, Demon Mama. Wow. Um, we have a couple of people that we like to revisit and see how their progress on cooking is coming. Um, and we also sometimes do watch good cooking, but unfortunately a lot of what we watch is bad cooking. And today, we're definitely almost assuredly going to see... Wow, that was loud. We're definitely almost assuredly going to see some bad cooking. So we're going to stop in with an old friend who seems to be up to his usual nonsense. Well, we got the uh, cheap slut pancakes. Excellent. Love it. Dave made what? Question mark, question mark, with a, uh, a lady in a bikini and an, ass an assuredly stolen photo of a lady in a, in a bikini. The dueling dinners of the Sopranos. We got the drunk slut. We got the Freya Allen mac and cheese. Oh, man. Listen, okay, something you should know. Whenever we watch Dave's cooking, um, he, he's super misogynistic. Some people don't know this, but Dave has an alter ego. And in fact, Dave's alter ego is the most famous part of his ego. See, Dave used to run a channel, an anti-SJW channel called War Corpse 666, which then rebranded to the Lord of Patriarchy. Um, and uh, he was kind of infamous in the anti-SJW era um, for screaming at little children on the internet that he felt were too woke. Um, and in a lot of his videos, he makes things like drunk slut spaghetti. And then throughout his um, cooking video, he says really um, horrible things about women. So it's going to be certainly very interesting. All right, let's see. Let's check out the drunk slut spaghetti. Let's do it. Let's do it, everybody. Welcome to Dave's Cooking Show, and for you today, we have what's known as Drunk Slut Spaghetti. So, an interesting start. One of the recurring issues with Dave's cooking is that he never fucking cleans anything, ever. His shit is always dirty as fuck. As you can see, there's already gunk all over the blown out counter over here, and this thing looks putrid. This is the spaghetti you make, you know, when you come home with some drunk slut. All right, uh, I didn't get- When was the last time that happened, Dave? Dave, when was the fucking last time that happened to you? I want to know. Be honest. When was the last fucking time? Chance to uh, film it, but I recently cooked a, um, about a pound of Italian sausage. And we're gonna deglaze the pan with some red wine. And give the drunk slut the rest. All right, let this reduce for a little bit. Um, should be a minute, maybe two minutes. And then you'll wanna add some garlic to it and give it a chance to aerosolize. Okay, as you can see, boiling away and now we're gonna add one green pepper chopped and one onion that's been diced there's no way that that is one onion and one green pepper that m must have been the world's smallest green pepper and the world's second smallest onion and but again also he always gets the instructions incorrect for his own cooking videos that he's making maybe he meant Wait, maybe he means he's the drunk slut. And basically then you're gonna wanna lower the heat to about medium low, and you're gonna want the veggies and the wine to kind of mingle together and kind of almost create a broth. Don't worry, this will come out great. I can already hear Jake's fanboys going, oh my good. 
Okay, everybody, this is a moment. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, hold on. Listen. Shh. Shh, shh, shh. This is why we don't... Ips. We only ever raid with love, and we do not engage with the zoo animals. Okay? This is why we do this. We never want this to happen. That? No, no. Shh, shh. We don't, we don't do that. We are like the, we're this guy. Okay. All right. All right. This is us. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on a minute. This is us. Hold on. Where's, where's this? Here we go. Oh, that's a bad quality image. Here we go. Perfect. Perfect. This'll do. I want you to know this is us at all times. Okay. Right there. We watch. We watch from a distance. We do not engage, okay? This is why. Unless I tell you to, and when we do, and when I tell you to, I mean we do it positively, okay? Why didn't you say it? Well, I'm not doing it that way. All right, so. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah, okay. So, give uh, us about five minutes on a medium low heat. Let them all incorporate with one another. Who's Jake? Uh, Jake is uh, a, 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 a streamer by the name of Actual Jake. Um, we watched a debate that he had with President Sunday recently. Um, uh, Jake also has a long-standing beef with, uh, with uh, Dave's cooking. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. They have a long time beef. And I will say it's quite funny. And uh, we'll be back for the next step. Okay, and as you what can you see, mean? it's coming right. That's where this meme came from. What do you mean? What do you it's mean? Not... Right along here. Now it's time to add a Whoa. six ounce can of tomato paste. Or six ounces of tomato paste, whichever. If you got that squeeze tube gimmick. And then you want to break that up. All right, after you. This looks like a chili. You've broken it up, spread it around. You should be confronted with something looking like this. <laughs> okay, listen, listen. I, I don't mean to be a nitpicker here. I don't mean to, but I never want to be confronted with a dish that I'm trying to cook. It's not the vocabulary that I want to have happen when I'm learning how to cook something. You will be confronted with this. Oh. Then you want to add a 14 and a half ounce can of crushed tomatoes and two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah, Recon. <laughs> and once you add that in, uh, the only other things you want to do is add a little bit of seasoning, you know, a little salt, a little pepper, uh, maybe some dried oregano, dried basil, or about a teaspoon of Italian uh, Italian seasoning. Or This is a really weird shift in soundtrack. We went from, like, generic medieval battle music, and now it's like... Uh, a cat walking across a piano? A teaspoon to a tablespoon. All depends on you. Just keep tasting it till the seasonings are right. Because remember, always... <laughs> Where's the fucking spaghetti? How hungry is this drunk slut? True, Sokton left. <laughs> Taste. Because you can add it. But once oh! it's in... Oh, he spilled so much. What the fuck? He splashed like a whole spoonful out. Oh my god, dude. It's in. All right, next step. Okay, so our sauce has been roughly kind of sitting on the simmer for, on the, you know, the slow simmer, medium low to low heat. Oh! Um, for slimy about- Slimy beef. S oof. You know, 20, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, now add the sausage back. And again, you're gonna to want to let this incorporate for roughly about. 50. That's not what incorporate means. That's stirring is not the same thing as what incorporate means. Okay, 
he uses that word so often and he truly does not know what it means. Mixing meat into sauce is not incorporating. I mean, it is, but only in the loosest version of the term. 15, uh, 20 minutes. Let everything, you know, kind of meld together and get happy with each other. Uh, this would be a great time right now to start the water for your spaghetti. And again, general rule with spaghetti, whatever it says on the packet um, or the box, whatever it says for the minimum amount of time for al dente, take a minute off. It says nine minutes, cook it for eight minutes. Because again, once you... Oh, this guy likes it al al dente, I see. Drained it and put it back in the colander or back in the pot. It's had the extra minute to come up to temp. Because um, again, unless you blast it with cold water and do not do that, there's one exception. It's going to cook for another minute. It's still cooking. Again, there's one exception to the blasting it with cold water, and that's if you're making. <laughs> Uncle Gumball says Al Bundy Dente, more like more like Ted Bundy. Oh. A pasta salad. The reason you don't rinse it off with cold water is all that good, wonderful starch that's on the pasta would get rinsed off. So, don't do that. Okay, as you can see here, we've got our spaghetti. It's been drained. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Ready. There we go. Dump all that wonderful. I love how he's making fun of himself when he could have just edited a little bit more. Like he could have just edited that clip a little shorter and it's uh, whatever. Good sauce on the spaghetti. Thank you, Make Senor sure you get Sorcerer. everything out. Likewise. And then you just want to, uh... Okay. Oh, you guys can't see it because of the... Dude, this is unironically kind of a cute oven mitt. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't believe Dave has a cute oven mitt. It's actually adorable. Credit to Dave for that. Stir this around until all the noodles and everything is, the noodles are evenly coated and everything's mixed together. And then we'll be ready for serving. Yeah, you need to incorporate the noodles. Again, right now, the drunk slut should be slipping into something more comfortable or nothing at all. All right, I've got... Yeah, totally. The spaghetti in the serving bowl. Time for a little bit of embellishment, and that's uh, Parmesan cheese. <laughs> the Parmesan cheese is some embellishment. Oh, He's man. He's being snowed over the tippy top of the pasta. And then, of course, I added some freshly ground black pepper. And that's really it. So, again, the next time you pick up a girl at a bar, she says she's hungry, and you need to throw something together, here you go. This is something that every man should have the ingredients to make in his fucking pantry. Okay? It's not hard. And if you don't have Italian sausage, get some ground beef. It's fine. Anyway, that's drunk slut spaghetti. Done. Obviously, oh. um, not a super impressive recipe. Sloppy as fuck. Spilled everything everywhere an incredibly large amount of tomato paste and an incredibly large amount of wine. Um, I don't think that I would enjoy a sauce with that much tomato paste in it. In fact, I feel like it is like guaranteed to give you indigestion with how much acidity would end up being in that. But um, all right, not the worst that he's ever done. Not the worst, I will say. Why does he, why does it do that? Why does it do that every goddamn time? All right, we got some other options. Let's check, let's check out another one. 
because we got a couple. Do we want to do we want to do a mystery one? Ooh, a pizza burrito. That sounds repulsive. We've also got the Arthur Morgan meatloaf and we've got Dave cooked what too? People want to do the Sopranos, but I kind of want to know what Dave cooked what too is. And the pizza burrito sounds uh, All right. Okay, mystery. We do it. Dave cooked what? Let's do it. Welcome to another edition. I hate the hard cut. Let me finish the fucking theme. It's the most exciting part. And uh, Dave made what? Today we have a chorizo ciabatta pizza. What I have? Chorizo ciabatta pizza. Here is about a pound of chorizo sausage that we're just gonna cook up. Okay, now we have to make the pizza sauce. What is uh, being added to the blender now is a can of a 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. Again, once you have San Marzano's, you are not going to be able to buy the cheap brand of tomatoes ever fucking again. It's just, it's the way it is. You, you can't you can't get pre-made sauce anymore. You can't you can't get the dude. You used pre-made sauce in the last episode. Literally, like two episodes ago, we watched you pour pre-made sauce into your drunk slut spaghetti. That was for the drunk sluts. Oh yeah yeah. Sorry. Oh I forgot. He was, I'm, I'm sure, oh yeah, guys, I'm sure Dave didn't eat any of that spaghetti. I bet he didn't eat any of it. Dave seems like a man with an incredible amount of self-control, and I'm sure he fed all of that spaghetti directly to the many drunk sluts that he was bringing home lately. Cheaper can of tomatoes, nope, it's the can of San Marzano's because they're the only ones with real fucking flavor. Then you want to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. We're going to do about three cloves of minced garlic. And despite what some jackass in a corn suit says, jarred garlic in oil is fine. And then you want to... I wonder who he's talking about there. Add a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. Suck done left says, I would kill to see this guy do a dating advice channel. I bet that somewhere on his streaming channel, he's done dating advice. But good luck finding it. Um, Dave has a tendency on his main channel to fall asleep while streaming. Um, like, no joke. He actually does. So there's multiple times where he's had, uh, like, stream VODs or his stream going live and he's just in the chair. So good luck ever fucking finding any of it. Killjoy 40K says, damn, he's so bitter about Jake. Yup. But also he, we've, we've, he literally never uses fresh ingredients. We've covered Dave for a very long time, okay? We've gone and checked out Dave's cooking. We've given him chance after chance. The man is allergic to fresh ingredients, okay? He avoids them like the plague. In fact, it's been a moment of praise every time we've seen one of his videos using fresh ingredients. We've literally gone out of our way to go, good job, Dave. So he really doesn't have anything to stand on here. Okay, and then you wanna add two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. Uh, you should always have balsamic vinegar in your uh, pantry. You really should have five vinegars. Uh, regular white. Now, no matter what some dumb bitch with demon's horn says, rat shit is fine in your skillet. <laughs> AC, balsamic, uh, red wine vinegar, and white wine vinegar. Remember, vinegar lasts forever, so... And then you just want to add a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. If you want the sauce spicier, 
Then obviously add more red pepper flakes. Then you just want to blend it. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, sauce is done. I know there's a debate on pizza sauce over whether or not you cook it. I'm on the kick right now of I like the sauce virgin, which means it's never been cooked. Okay, now we're ready to... Oh, no, oh, dude. I thought he was going to make his own ciabatta. He bought a fucking Walmart ciabatta bread. Oh, this is pathetic. Start assembly. Um, Doe says, of course he'd call it virgin. <laughs> yeah, right, Doe? Basically, what you want to do is spread some of that sauce on some lightly toasted ciabatta bread. Again, you don't want it super toasted because, again, this is going to go back into the oven. Unfortunately, I forgot to film something, but everybody was ready to rip this shit apart when it came out of the oven. And then you're going to have to pardon me. I pulled I pulled a moment here and I spilled my drink on myself. It just made me very sad. Now I need to. Let's do it. Let's continue. Let's continue. Oh. Uh... You want to add uh, that chorizo sausage? And then... this looks so bad. This looks so goddamn bad. And you want to add some pepperonis? I didn't bother to count them. Just, just cover them. Cover it with pepperoni. And then you want to add on top of it whole milk mozzarella. The old shit. The good old shit. Whole milk. Not that part skim stuff. And unfortunately, I forgot to film when they came out of the oven. And literally about five seconds after I sliced them, everything got devoured. So, so unfortunately, there's no real closing shot, but you can imagine about 15. <laughs> Dude, come on! This video got 213 views over the last two weeks. Two comments. You don't even get to see what the food looks like at the end. You don't even- Why post it? Why bother posting it at all? Minutes in the oven at about 425 degrees. What they'll look like. I'm sorry. It's just the most Dave moment I can possibly imagine to get so hungry and drunk that you forgot that you were making this for a cooking video even though you just filmed yourself cooking the entire thing and just eating it straight out of the oven. Being like, mm, I'm, 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 oh, oh no, I forgot. Oh my fucking God. Oh my God. All right, we're doing one more Dave and then we're gonna try something else. Cause I can't, I can't, I don't know how much more I can do of this b bastard. Let's see. Ooh, the dueling dinners of the Sopranos or the Doritos chorizo casserole. Oh, man. Oh, we got to do this one. Doritos chorizo casserole by Dave. Welcome to Dave's Cooking Show, and for you today, we're going to make a Doritos casserole. And once again, I feel the need to apologize because I was really bad about making sure to hit the little record button, so this one's going to be shot kind of weird. M my man, oh no. Have we entered the cognitive decline arc? Has it finally happened? He's actually struggling to even remember to film the videos. Why, why upload it? Just reshoot it. You shoot a hundred of these videos, just reshoot the video, why? But you wanna start off with one pound of ground beef, one pound of chorizo. You basically wanna cook them till they're done. And then 
well, and then uh, drain them, but you want to reserve just a little bit of the drippings. All right, now that we got our meat drained and we got just a little bit of those drippings in the pan left, uh, add one cup of chopped onion, and you just want to... Credit to Dave, it looks like he might have actually cleaned his stove. Maybe the spill of the sauce forced him to clean his stove. It's not like pristine, but it looks way cleaner than last time. Credit. Round that up. Add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then give this a couple of minutes to uh, cook up. Don't worry if they take kind of a yellowish appearance on. Um, that's just from uh, the chorizo dripping, so nothing to be worried about. And then when the uh, onions are sufficiently translucent... Socked on left says, you're completely wrong. The drunk slut turned Dave's life around. That's why he's a cleaner man. Well, hold on a second. We've only seen one video in which he's sufficient, sufficiently clean. I don't think we can jump to that. Maybe. What, what if she just cleaned it for him because she couldn't handle it, huh? Add the meat mix back in and give this a couple more minutes so everything get, can get incorporated and happy, happy. That's not what incorporated means. Why? Why do you... Oh. Be happy together. Okie dokie. Now we're going to add... I'm sorry. That's baked beans. That's baked beans and nacho cheese. And those, I'm sorry, but those don't look like San Marzano tomatoes. Where's the fucking San Marzano tomatoes, my man? Weren't you just fucking lecturing everyone about how you're a stupid hipster loser if you don't buy San Marzano tomatoes and now you're mixing fucking generic tomatoes with fucking baked beans and nacho cheese? Now we're going to add the rest of this. Um, you're going to want oh, a 15-ounce no. can of red kidney beans that you will drain. Two... Those don't look like canned red kidney beans. They look like baked beans, bro. And apparently this isn't nacho cheese. This is apparently um, cream of something. It's Campbell's. He just was showing a Campbell's can. So this must be some kind of a soup. Maybe like cream of, uh, cream of broccoli or something? Two... Uh cans of the Rotel diced tomatoes with green chilies. One I drain. Ah, Rotel, huh? Those San Marzano Rotel? One I did not. A 10.5 ounce can of cream of chicken soup. Cream of chicken? What the fuck is going on here? Cream of fucking chicken? What is he making? And a 15 ounce can of chili beans that I did not drain, just dumped them right in. You're also going to want a tablespoon of paprika. Why? Three tablespoons what? of chili powder. You also want to add the uh, meat in, obviously. Oh man, he barely filmed any of this. Oh, this looks heinous. And then you're going to want a teaspoon of cumin. So, uh, then you just want to basically stir all this and then simmer over a very, very, very low heat for at least an hour. I simmered mine for 60 minutes. At least an hour. I simmered mine for 60 minutes. Well, if we all recall the Dave clock video, we know he struggles with time. We know he struggles specifically with, you know, how time is divided out. Just, again, low heat. Oh, and also, of course, salt, pepper. But, uh... The Dave clock video? Oh, man. 
I'm amazed. The Dave Clock video, okay, so there's a really infamous video of Dave live on stream getting insanely angry because um, because actual Jake uh, said that his clocks weren't actually set to anything. And the reason for that is, of course, he has a bunch of clocks on his walls, or he used to have a bunch of clocks on his walls, and they would say, like, locations on them. But the problem was is that the times were drastically different and including the minutes. So it would say like New York and it would be like 8.30 and then it would say Moscow and it would be like uh, uh, 12.27 or something like that. Like, or you know what I mean? Like just completely different times. All of the clocks had the minute hands in different spots. And so people pointed out that like, oh, your clocks aren't actually set to those time zones. They're just like random clocks. And he was like, you don't fucking know that. And he got really mad about it. And then there's a video. Of, we should just watch it. Somebody get me the video. One of you, while we watch this, get me the video. We'll just watch it. It's fucking great. Yeah, then just simmer this for one hour and we should be ready for the next step. This will be your meat mix. Should look something like that while we're simmering. Oh yeah, you'll either want to shred or put in the food processor, or you can buy the bags if you like. You'll need four cups of cheddar cheese, by the way. So, good time to do that. Okay, so I sprayed this pan uh, with Pam, and now you're going to add the first layer of Doritos. By the way, you'll need about 12 ounces of nacho cheese Doritos that you've basically beaten into crumbs. Uh, basically, just grab a party size bag. You'll never, once you have San Marzano tomatoes, you'll never be able to go back to generic crap ever again. That's why I'm using Pam and Doritos in this recipe, and canned Rotel, and uh, beans that haven't been separated from their fucking shitty liquid. Anyway, shut the fuck up. So you want a nice, good layer on the bottom here. Add a nice little layer of cheese. Oh, by the way, you should be preheating the oven to 350 degrees. So a nice little layer of that shredded cheese. And now it's time to add a layer of the meat. Redcon, he's absolutely eating all of it by himself. Uh, no joke. There's no possible way he's sharing this with anybody sauce and then you want to add another layer of the crushed uh, nacho uh, cheese Dorito chips and then you want to add another layer of cheese the other half of that meat mix we made and finally um the last of the cheese to go on top and then you want to uh, put this in the oven uh, till the cheese is melted I forgot how long this looks terrible just terrible long it took about 15 minutes just keep an eye on it Okay, I did add a little bit of uh, Monterey Jack to the top layer when I popped it in the oven. Now, you want to let this rest for at least 20 minutes after you pull it out of the oven. Otherwise, it's just going to explode. You're not going to get like that casserole type of thing. So anyway, <laughs> let it rest for 20 minutes. Let it come down in temperature. Holy shit. Alrighty, we've let it rest. Oh. And there you go. So that's a Doritos casserole. Done. Yeah, okay, man. Okay, dude. All right, bro. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. So, the setup for this. Actual Jake made fun of him about the clocks and pointed out the type, the, the fact that all of the times, the minute hands are all wrong, so they can't possibly be set to the correct time zones, okay? And he got very mad. And instead of just admitting that he never set any of these clocks, he decided to prove Jake wrong. And he didn't just research it on his own, he did it live on his stream. And we're gonna watch this. I'm- God damn it. <laughs>
Tim, time. Tim zone. Tim, the Tim. In London. Time in London. All right, right let's it see is it. Nine twenty-two in the p.m. in London. <laughs> now, <coughs> let's do another one. All right, time. remember that it's to, It's nine twenty-two in London. Okay. I'm in. Time in Germany. Oh. Ten twenty-two. <laughs> 10, 10 what the why would it be t what <laughs> i'm dead i'm fucking dead bro no 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 now let's go now let's go now let's go time tokyo, tokyo. fuck what's he do fuck okay i'm getting annoyed I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> Time in Moscow, 11.22. Almost like time zones. Don't change the minutes, my man, just like everyone told you. Come on, dude. Come on, bro. Stop it. Stop. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no! 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 Oh! Oh, come on, dude! Oh! Oh! <laughs> I gotta turn the air on! I'm dying! Oh! Oh, Dave! Yeah, one of the most legendary moments when you when you're so confident in your lie, when you when you know and and just keep in mind, Dave knows he's never set those clocks. Dave knows that he's never set those clocks, but he's convinced himself of his own lie that time zones can have different minutes when obviously they don't. And so he's so confident in that that he decides to go on a live stream and look it up and get owned. And then he gets mad. He's like, no, oh, this is pissing me off now. Moscow, Tokyo, why are they all variants of 22? Incredible. And yes, for those who said that isn't, isn't this guy like a giga chud? Yes, he is. He's also known as Lord of Patriarchy. Legendary, legendary moment from uh, actual Jake. Okay, but we have more cooking to do, everybody. We haven't checked in on Jack's cooking in a long time. So let's find out what cooking with Jack has been up to. Jesus Christ, he does it too. Church meat, the vision 2023. Uh-oh. A Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwich ripoff recipe. Betty White's Wings, football finger food. Pizza pot pies? A recipe roulette. An AI recipe? Dude, don't do that. Birthday ice cream bread and apple dump cake. Cinnamon roll hack? What do we want to do? This is the guy who made the poison brisket. Out of the nursing home ribs? Mushroom cheeseburger casserole? Monster wings in mushroom gravy? Oh man. All right, we gotta see it. Holy shit, bro. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Hope you're having a good new year. Hope it's been a powerful start. Hope you're meeting all your goals that you plan for this year. Uh, if not, go, go, go. But for right now, my goal is to make an incredible dish. So, um, I haven't, uh, I haven't tried this recipe yet, but I want to talk to you for a moment about recipes, all right? So recipes are interesting. So a recipe is 
can be like a secret, but if you print a recipe, m most of you don't know this, if you print a recipe or you publish it to where the public can see it, it becomes immediately public domain. Look it up. You can't, you can't copyright a recipe. You just can't do it. So if you show a recipe to the public, that recipe becomes usable by anybody. So, you, so you, when you guys go, oh, that's not your recipe. None of them are my recipes. I don't Dude, just because a recipe becomes in the public domain doesn't mean you can claim that it's yours. What a fucking dumb piece of shit. Okay, guys, by the way, if it seems like I'm extra mean to Jack, I want you guys to understand this. Jack Scalfani is a massive piece of shit, okay? Not only does this is this guy a terrible cook, not only is this guy a repeat asshole on his show to other people, there's also videos of him admitting to beating his son. And he also decided to publish a video of him arguing about why gay people are bad on his channel. So you never have to feel bad about making fun of Jack Scalfani, okay? I mean, sometimes I create things myself, but I try different recipes, and if they're good, I put it down below. If it's bad, I don't bother. I don't even print it down below. But most of them are pretty good. I pick recipes that sound good. They got good ingredients. The pictures look good. I hope to recreate that recipe and share it with you and tell you that it's a success. Whoever invented the recipe, I have no idea. Probably the person I'm reading it from did invent that recipe they're recreating it. So I just wanted you to understand the laws regarding recipes. My barbecue sauce recipe. Oh yeah, remember the time he called his mom on a video and recorded her saying that she de she really did not want to be in the video and then he just put her in anyway? Yeah, I remember that. Incredible. All right, I could give it to you guys. I'm not going to, but I could give it to you. Then it's public knowledge, it's public domain. Everybody can use it and make it and sell it and do whatever they want. You can't protect your recipe if they're not protectable. I've tried. I went to a lawyer and I tried to protect my, my sauces and you can't do it. You just don't tell anybody. Dude, what? So if you like your recipe, don't share it. All right? But uh, the if you don't like if you like your recipe, don't share it or else some dumb asshole like me will come around and pretend that I invented it because technically the law says you can't copyright it. Newsflash, the law says you can't t copyright a recipe. That doesn't mean that you can claim that it's yours. That doesn't mean that it's right to do so, and it doesn't mean that it's the truth to do so. Once I get, they're public and they're shared, and there's thousands and thousands of recipes out there on the internet. So I try to bring the ones that I think sound good, and this is one of them. So. Uh, one of the new things we're trying this year, we started at the end of last year. We're not going to bring you in close and show you all the ingredients because they're listed down below. I thought, you know what? Some people don't want to watch really long videos. So I'm going to shut up right now and start the video and start. This is a 12 minute video, by the way, in which the beginning he spent the entire first fucking three minutes of this video talking about why it's okay for him to pretend that he invented recipes that he didn't cooking and show you what I'm going to do and then as the ingredients get put in I will then name the ingredients but if you need a list it'll be down below in the recipe if not let me know all right let's get started here we got our our wing <laughs> if not let me know so if you don't if you don't want the rest if you don't want the ingredients you're supposed to go in the comments and sell them no I don't want the ingredients <laughs> We got four in this package, four in this package, <laughs> four in this package, all right? And the first thing you're going to do is don't do anything with this yet. Go over to the oven, preheat to 400 degrees, okay? Come back here. You're going to open up the wings. <laughs> the first thing you're going to do is not do anything with the turkey that I'm showing. Let me show you. Oh, man. Hold on. Oh. Right. Oh yeah, so, okay, something else you should know about Jack. Jack is always, 
absolutely horrible about food safety, okay? I'm talking, he doesn't wash his hands, he leaves meat, he cross-contaminates constantly. There's a video, one of the videos of his is his chicken sous vide, where he says that it's, uh, it's perfectly done, and when he opens the chicken, it's literally pink in the center, and he's eating it, and you can see that it's pink and dripping with uncooked chicken juice. It's fucking putrid, okay? Putrid. And he's like, oh, it's perfectly done. That's what you want with the flavor. Nice fucking uh, uh, chicken tartare. Now a wing, a turkey wing has three sections. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys right now. It has that section right there, nice. which is kind of like the wing. Ah, yes, I love that section. Thanks for telling us about that section in your, in, in your informative cooking video. Part. Then it's got a drumette, and then it's got kind of like a double bone midsection. So there's three, there's one, two, three. You separate all three of these parts. Get them all separated and meet me right back here. You're gonna cut right here in this joint. You're gonna cut in this joint, and you're gonna separate one, two, three. Okay, get them all separated, and then we're gonna season them. So I put them in a big like metal bowl or something. Cut these wings into three parts. You got one part right there. You got another part right there. And you got another part right there. Now that I touched the turkeys, I've got to go wash my hands. <gasps> He's washing his hands? He washed his fucking hands. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's start seasoning. So I'm literally throwing it on top of all this. A little pepper. There we go. A little salt. A little more salt. Some garlic. Can't have too much garlic. Exactly. You don't have to worry about You actually can have too much garlic. Garlic. You can over garlic and it'll still taste good. Probably tastes better than when you originally planned on it. All right. A little basil. my god bro holy shit garlic powder and onion powder to that level these are going to be the saltiest the this is going to be the driest bottom of the of the salt lake wings you could possibly imagine that is so much salt let's open this up this is brand new hang on there's some poultry seasoning, and I know the seal's still on. That's gonna have salt in it too. If it's pre-mixed poultry seasoning, it's gonna have tons of salt in it too. Oh my wow. God. Okay. A little poultry seasoning. There we go. Can't go wrong with poultry seasoning. Usually, poultry seasoning, I think it's almost always made with sage. So we're going to put this off to the side, but first I'm going to toss it really quick with my hand just to get the seasoning all on, on everything. First thing we do is spray this pan with some olive oil. Next thing we're going to do is do the, now, <clears throat> okay, so I screwed up and I forgot to buy bell peppers, so we're not putting bell peppers in my recipe, but normally you guys can, or if you like other vegetables, you can. I'm doing mushrooms and I'm doing, hold on, and I'm doing celery. There's supposed to be bell peppers in here too, but I mean, I eat bell peppers all the time, so I'm okay if I skip the bell peppers. You are now Cosmos, of, Cosmos Infinity. All right, so let's show you what we're gonna do now, all right? There's your vegetables. You're gonna take your chit, your, Chicken. I keep wanting to say chicken. Take your turkey and put it skin side down. They both have skin, but put the heavier skin down. Okay? And if you're doing just the the drumsticks, then it doesn't matter. There you go. Coat as much as you can. Now, go get your foil. 
Cover this tightly with foil, and then we're gonna cook it for one hour, okay? Okay guys, this is what it looks like covered in foil. Let's get it in the oven for one hour. One hour. Pull that out. Carefully. Carefully. Don't get a steam burn. Let the steam out slowly. You're just going to open one corner. Okay? Really quick. You're going to pour this in. This is your chicken broth. Put right in the corner chicken. here. Why uh, use... Why use... Okay, I know this is kind of funky, but why why use chicken broth? They, they make turkey broth. You can get turkey broth. Why do chicken broth? Whatever. I'm doing, it asks for half a cup. I'm doing three quarters of a cup because I am got a lot going on here. All right. Tuck that carefully back. Don't burn yourself like I am. Be careful. Use your mitts if you have to. Put it back in the oven for 45 minutes. Okay, that I was gonna say, an hour for this type of thing seemed very low for the turkey. Bruh. All right, so the goal is to keep this, if you have to rewrap it, that's fine. But if you can use the one that's already on here, just be careful. Let the steam escape if steam's coming out. Okay, there you go. Don't get a steam burn, okay? Let's take a look and see how this looks. Take to out. be fair, this is called monster wings in mushroom gravy. This is not technically a casserole. Oh, put it in this Good night, stargazing right stars. Okay, then we're gonna put it back in in a minute, but first we're gonna, it's a little slippery there. Let me take this over to the stove. I'm going to dump this in my stock pot. Make sure my stock, yeah, my stock pot's ready. We're going to dump this in the stock pot and bring it back. And take your time. Because you want it all exposed to, like, the flame. Take the skin side up. Okay, got it all. 20 minutes we're going to pop this in so it gets a little crispy. Then I'll show you the next step. But let's get this in the oven for 20 minutes uncovered. Just put it in just like this. Okay, so we're going to simmer this so let's get that started right now there we go okay we're gonna put some cream of mushroom in there we go okay put a little bit of cream of chicken in there we go why why even use turkey wings if you're just gonna do cream of chicken and chicken broth why why not just do chicken wings Literally, and of course, literally everything that he's used here has been either canned or uh, powdered, with the exception of the mushrooms and the celery. Put our onion and mushroom Lipton packet. A packet of, of dip? Lipton dip? Why? Put Why make... Why is this a cooking video? This is the thing that I don't understand. Why make a cooking video if you're not, like, making anything yourself? Like, none of it. You're just sort of mixing ingredients. It's more like a mixing video. But it's not ASMR. It's not, like, oddly satisfying. It's just mixing shit. All right, that's all we need in there. We got all the drippings, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, the mushroom onion. Oh my goodness, this is gonna blow up. This is gonna be so good. Let's get that all mixed in there. Do, 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 do. So we're gonna simmer this for only about 10 minutes to get everything incorporated. Now this goes on this. We pop it back in the oven to finish cooking. Like it's not done already, right? It's been in there 14,000 times, but ironically, let's get this a little closer. Okay. So I'm just doing it with a ladle. 
get it over here and just pour this on top. Once I get most of the gravy out, I'll just pour it by hand. The last bit of- That is not gravy. I'm sorry. I don't believe that that counts as a fucking gravy. That is soup. It is soup. You mixed Lipton soup mix with a little bit of chicken drippings, with a little bit of, yeah, like turkey drippings mixed with chicken broth, mixed with two other types of canned soup. It's soup. That's not a gravy. There's not even any flour in it. It's just, it's just soup. It's just soup. It's just fucking soup. A bit. Also, okay. Also, I'm sorry. Remember how I noted at the beginning that the rub that he was putting on there was three heavy salt ingredients? He added salt to his chicken or to his turkey. Then he added onion powder and garlic powder, both of which are mixed with salt. Then he added pre-mixed poultry seasoning with salt. Now we have, uh, now we have salted chicken broth and cream of mushroom and cream of chicken and powdered Lipton soup mix. The salt levels in this, I don't know how you will taste anything but salt. This is a salt lick. This is a salt lick. Why not just, why not just go to the, go to your local, like, uh, like farm supply and buy yourself like one of those horse salt licks. There we go. Back in the oven for 20 minutes. Still at 400, finish cooking, and we're done. We're sitting down and eating. Throw that back in. There we go. Mmm, looks delicious. It smells so good. I'm sorry, that does not look delicious to me. This is not what I would categorize as looking delicious. It looks like somebody spilled Lipton soup into a, a tray of poultry. These are the mushrooms that have been like 12 times cooked. Good. Guys. Wow. Oh, this, this smells amazing. I may make this next Thanksgiving. There's so much, such a smell in the air right now. So. Amazing. One of my favorite things is when people are trying to describe things and they're like, you wouldn't believe the smell. The smell, it's such a smell. It smells like such an incredible smell. Dude, what? Describe it. Use your descriptive words. You know who else does this a lot? DSP. Uh, DSP did food reviews. And a lot of times when he would describe the food, he's like, it's very, um, you know, it's got this flavor to it. It's very salty. It's very oily. It's got salt and oily. I may make this next Thanksgiving. There's so much, such a smell in the air right now. So let's give us a try. The gravy looks beautiful. The mushrooms look beautiful. Hold on. Mmm. So creamy. The gravy is beyond creamy. That was amazing. So much. Like almost like it's a soup and not a gravy because you used a can of cream of mushroom, a can of cream of, of chicken, a p entire packet of Lipton cream of chicken or onion soup mix. Much mushroom flavor. Uh, I kind of wish I had the bell pepper in here, but I don't see bell pepper working in here. I see big chunks. So then why would you say you kind of wished? Why did you say you kind of wish you had the bell pepper in there, but if, but you don't see it working in there? Why would you even say that? Chunks of onions or big slices or something, something else. But anyway, this is a definite recipe down below. I'll have the bell peppers there. You can choose to use them or not use them, all right? But I definitely approve this recipe. Great recipe. Uh, totally honest. I love this. This is our dinner. He says that after everything. He always says he loves it. Except for the one time that he made, quote unquote, Korean uh, barbecue that had no Korean ingredients whatsoever in it.